The Latin Quarter does not exist. A controversial take, I realize, but it's kind of more of an Anglicism, and it's become a thing. Like, all words are ultimately made up, so too are all neighborhoods, and well, the Latin Quarter is a very famous one for what? Why do they call it the Latin Quarter? Is there samba and tango? What's going on in this area? We're gonna cover it today in Paris My Pockets, day in the Latin Quarter that doesn't exist. Enjoy this day in a place that doesn't exist, because there's actually a lot of good stuff here that does exist. It's gonna be pretty great. Well, let's just get into it. The Latin Quarter is called the Latin Quarter because well, they used to speak Latin here. It's a university district or a student district, and it still is that today. The people that call it the Latin Quarter locally are probably looking to go out for the evening, and they're gonna have a good time because there is a lot of nightlife and a lot of cheap food, and that's basically what we're gonna focus on today. And of course, if you want more recommendations, because I have a ton in this area, go to parisinmypocket.com, get my guide to Paris right now to have the best time in Paris possible. I swear it's gonna be the best money you spend after your plane ticket to get here. It's gonna be great. But to get started, of all the things we need to do most, we need coffee, and there's coffee right over here. While the cranes in the background might be ruining the view to some degree, this is probably the best view in Paris for your coffee, pound for pound. I mean, having Notre Dame hovering over you in the distance, it's not technically in the Latin Quarter, but what is the Latin Quarter? The Latin Quarter is not even really a thing. So who cares? We can see it from here, and that's all that really counts. This is in my 25 tips video from a year ago, but Shakespeare and Company's cafe is nice. It's a little pricey, but for the view that you get with it, it's super worth it, to be honest. I'm even gonna have to put my sunglasses on again because the sun is coming right back out. And even when it's not sunny out, you can sit inside and be cozy and read your newspaper and just enjoy the view. And it's honestly pretty magical. So not a bad place to start your day with a little bit of coffee. And of course, right next to Shakespeare and Company, the cafe is Shakespeare and Company, the bookstore, which highly worth a visit, definitely wander through. I don't think I'm allowed in there either filming or with my dog, but you know, it's still worth going in. It is a little pricey for the average student though, so let's see if we can't find another option along the way. There are a lot of bookstores in this neighborhood either way. Feel free to pop in, especially if it's raining. Go browse some books. That's what I was planning on doing today if this all went to crap and it started raining. I was just gonna abandon the whole plan and, and go to bookstores, but we can do that another time too. There's also a huge line to get in. We don't, we don't have time for that, but it's worth going in. I definitely recommend there Buy a book, get them to stamp it. They don't have my book. Buy someone else's book. It'll be, it'll be fun. All right, if you do want to continue your education while you're here in the student district, then one of the museums you might absolutely want to hit, might absolutely want to hit, you know what I mean, is going to be the Cluny Museum. The Cluny Museum not only is a beautiful, really cool mishmash of architecture, very interesting, has some ruins, and surrounded by some very nice small parks, some of which allow dogs, some of which don't. Makes for a nice spot for a little lunchy picnic if you do want to get some food to go. It is the Medieval Arts Museum, or the National Medieval Arts Museum of France. Has nothing to do with George Clooney. You won't find it, uh, you might find it in an espresso machine here, I don't know. I'm not so sure about the spy satellites, but give it a look. Be a nice stroll through. We can't go in because I have Cooper. And also, we'll, we'll, come, we'll come check this out again here soon, don't you worry. And right next to the Clooney Museum, in keeping with the student theme, uh, we've got a kilo shop. This looks like a new kilo shop too, which is a thrift store that you can pay by weight. It looks nice. And if you want to do some thrift shopping, I mean, who doesn't like a little thrifting? But rather than doing any kilo shopping while we're here, I have a whole bunch of Patreon mailing to send. Thanks to all my patrons. That was for the postcard and print clubs. I send postcards every three months if we're on time. And thanks to Warren Brower, today's patron producer, for helping me to put this together and go out and see the Latin Quarter and discover that maybe it really does exist. Maybe, deep down in my heart, it was there all along. The first thing that comes to mind when most people think of this area is gonna be these streets around Saint-Savran, which is overloaded with food and underloaded with any actual good options. I used to have one or two recommendations down here, uh, and that was like a decade ago. And it was because there's only one Mexican restaurant in town that I really knew of, and it was here, and it was okay. It's expensive, but it was it was fine. Yeah, we're not gonna do this. We're not we're not we're not sticking around here. I did have a really sad expat Christmas at a pizza place down here once. I mean, kind of a good memory. We're not repeating that mistake. Ah, Saint Michel. This is what we're coming for, though. Now, while I'm not gonna recommend that we go eat lunch or dinner or have drinks in that little cluster over there, Saint Michel is a great place to start if you do want to go in there. And I can't say that you shouldn't because. Everyone should have a wild night in that area at least once in their life. I've had plenty myself. I just don't really, you know, go for that anymore. 
However, Place Saint Michel, despite the fact that the fountain's not on, is a really nice meeting point. Like it's an open, obvious square. You're standing out here in the middle of traffic, easy to find people and then wander from here. Whether you're gonna go to the Luxembourg Gardens over to Notre Dame or Saint Chapelle, it's a pretty good central spot for just kind of starting and then branching out. It's also getting to the edge of what the Google calls the Latin Quarter. Like there's no definitive Latin Quarter. We're just, this is as far as we go this way. Let's go find lunch somewhere else. All right, elephant in the room, the Sorbonne. The Sorbonne is a very famous district and a very famous university, but I'm gonna have to claim ignorance here because every time I try to understand exactly how this works, there's no parity between the US and the French education system exactly. And the Sorbonne, while the t-shirts will claim has been here since the 13th century, I talked to the people that actually work for the university and they made it sound like maybe it was a fairly new thing. The point is that there have been universities here forever and it's a beautiful, beautiful area. It's where the name comes from, right? The Latin Quarter. People speak Latin here. The thing is that these aren't buildings you can go into. You can walk around this area and you can look at them like the chapel behind me. But the fact of the matter is that you're not going to be able to go in and see like lecture halls or the interior courtyards. Generally, you have to be a student to go into anything around here. So it's a nice walking district for getting around. The Luxembourg Gardens are just over here, which they aren't in the Latin Quarter, according to Google, but they're right there. So you might as well go and join them. Uh, but yeah, this is a student district. So uh, as far as the stuff going on behind me. Can't go there, but this little square here, you can, when the fountains come on, it'll be really nice. Trust me, it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, if you just want to feel smarter by being here, by osmosis, Cooper is basically a genius now just because he sat here for all of like three seconds. Huh, buddy? He's so smart. He's just such a smart little guy. Well, the Pantheon is probably the crown jewel of this neighborhood, and we could sit here and enjoy our sandwich. We're about to go get ourselves a banh mi. As you'll see a lot of people doing in this area, I have something that's a little bit more unique for you. I've covered this in a lot of other videos. If you want to come check it out, check out those videos. The Arène de Lutèche, uh, or Lutèche, Lutèche? The Arène de Lutèche, Lutèche, Lutèche is the old name of Paris, and these arenas are actually an old Roman arena that they excavated not that long ago. And this is where I'm gonna sit and eat my banh mi. A banh mi, if you've never seen one before, which you should have at some point or another, is a Vietnamese-French combo. Actually, you did see these in my sneaky sandwiches video. If you haven't seen the sneaky sandwiches video yet, go watch that right now. There's a little link in the corner, maybe one below if we're lucky. So we've got pork, mayo, carrots, little bits of onion it looks like, some coriander, lots of coriander, lots of peppers. Mmm. So good. This banh mi place that I love, is uh, very originally called Banh Mi. <laughs> There's a number of them, but this one, the purple one specifically, is both cheap, it was five euros for this sandwich, but she didn't even make me pay. I'm gonna go back and pay her because she doesn't take cards. She only takes cash. I didn't realize that, but she was nice enough to say, go eat, come back, you can pay me tomorrow. Very lovely woman. Only open during the week, not on the weekends, but that's okay because it's very delicious. The sun's coming out, just come, sit, enjoy. Obviously the Pantheon and that square around it is much closer, easier to get to but this is a little bit hidden. It's, it is a little tricky to find, so if you're feeling hangry, maybe don't give it that much of an effort. It's really, really cool. Pretty chill environment, it's nice. And I mean, you're sitting in Paris among Roman ruins on the side of town that they initially colonized and, uh, you know, just surrounded by history. Birds tweeting, dogs eating weeds, stop that, and uh, enjoy your sandwich. Speaking of nature, there is one big park that's in what Google defines as the Latin Quarter. Let's go check that out. Cooper's really cramping my style today because we are in the Jardin des Plantes. He's not allowed to be in here. It's a really big garden. It has a zoo, it has museums, has some really nice spots to go walk and wander. Even a little hill you can spiral all the way to the top. We can't really walk through it today because there are garden staff all over the place. We are just inside the gate to get this one shot. Hey. And Cooper found a stick. Huh, oh, buddy? You found a stick? You found a stick? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you gonna get? You can't get the stick. Now, I don't really think of the Jardin des Plantes as a part of the Latin Quarter personally, because the Latin Quarter doesn't exist, but it does make sense from an educational perspective, since you have the Natural History Museum here, among others. And it's just a really nice place to go walk. Cooper, however, keeping us from the actual garden portion. So we'll go in and check that out at another video coming soon. Make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss out. We'll go check out some of this stuff. Don't you worry, we're gonna get in there. But for now, let's carry on. You could go check out the Grand Mosque across the street. 
but Cooper's also not gonna be allowed in there. So it's beautiful. Tea room is really nice but we, we, we can't go in there with Cooper. And if you're a fan of cats, the Natural History Museum is where it's gonna be until January 7th, 2024. There is of course Rue Mouffetown and Place de la Contrescarpe, but we'll do those another time. They deserve their own video. For those of you that were a little bit upset that I breezed right past the Pantheon without even really mentioning it, I was always gonna kinda come get a drink here at the Bombardier. Here, I always want to say call the, it's the Bombardier. Bombardier? I always call it the Bombardier and I, I get myself in trouble for that. Anyways, listen, basically you've earned yourself a drink by walking around this far. And while this may not be necessarily the cheapest pub in the area, and it's not, it does have a lot of character, a lot of history, lots of late nights here in the past, and a phenomenal backdrop. I mean, it's really hard to beat. So if you want to get a drink with the Pantheon, and my third favorite, but second favorite available church right now, maybe my most favorite available church right now, is St. Etienne du Mont right next to it. There's very hard, it's gonna be really hard to beat this view for a drink. Cheers. Mm. So once we finish our pints here at the English pub that I apparently can't pronounce the name of, we're gonna go just around the corner to one of my favorite local spots for a little bit of a Mexican treat on the affordable side for you students. And those of you who wanna relive your student days in the student quarter, let's go. I don't know if I mentioned this, uh, I know I did in one video, but my guide has been redone and revamped and 2023 is now available in the fifth, the sixth, all of the Arandis months are in here along with my recommendations for what to do, where to stay, like hundreds of recommendations. It's a phenomenal guide. I'm very proud of how it got put together. It looks gorgeous. You can get it at parasmypocket.com. All the places we've gone to today, plus so many more are in it. You're not gonna run out of options for what to eat while you're in Paris, and I guarantee it'll give you the best time. There've been some changes since the last time I was here in presentation, but this is a place that I tend to go to when I'm craving nachos in the neighborhood. And if you're looking for like French recommendations or like upscale restaurants, obviously going for student places today, hopefully deterred you from that. But I do have a Frenchy French restaurants video, which you can check out, which does have some cheaper options. It's kind of a bistro selection. And we'll do a nicer, like higher end video one of these days. And then of course, my guide is full of great French recommendations as well as all kinds of international food, delicious. But if you're looking for an international South American taco quesadilla, nacho combination with oh, this will scratch the itch it's not that expensive 21 bucks for the whole meal for both of us pretty good deals today delicious the beers were the most expensive part two beers and a half cost as much as this meal and i think that does it for our walk through the latin quarter there are a number of other places we could go like tons more i love this neighborhood even if i don't really believe that it exists you know, deep in my heart, I do believe it exists. If you wanna know more of my recommendations or different ones that aren't necessarily student food, grab my guide at parasinmypocket.com right now. Enjoy it, because it's gonna change your whole trip. And of course, if you're a patron of mine, thank you for supporting the channel. And if you would like to support the channel and all this exploration that I do to find you original ideas of where to go to eat, to drink, and to take your Cooper, jump on patreon.com slash Swanson right now. Thanks a lot, there's a cop coming. We gotta get out of the way.